Dallas Cowboys and Dak Prescott. The news that went viral on Monday. Dallas and Dak Prescott have agreed to a deal. Finally, the wait is over. Dak Prescott inks a four-year, $160 million deal, $120 million guaranteed to remain with the Dallas Cowboys. He signs the highest paid signing bonus for an NFL quarterback ever, $66 million. That surpasses Aaron Rodgers. That surpasses Russell Wilson. He's going to be collecting over $75 million in the first year alone. In fact, over the course of his first three seasons in Dallas, he's going to be making an average of $42 million. Finally, we have the news. We've been waiting. I've been waiting two years. It's crazy. It's already been two years, but two years have elapsed. And finally, we've got this news in Dallas, Texas. So for me, you know, obviously Dak Prescott from a financial standpoint kind of helps the Dallas Cowboys out a little bit because there he's only going to be accounting for 22 million in the cap this year. So normally if he was going to sign the franchise tag it'd be 37 million, but because he signs this long-term deal it actually ends up saving Dallas an additional 15 million dollars. So when you look at Dak Prescott and you're trying to evaluate, okay, is this worth it? Is it not worth it? You first have to take a step back and say, well, what what has he accomplished with with Dallas so far? Well, we do know that he's thrown the most number of 400-yard passing games in Dallas Cowboys history with seven. He's rushed for over 24 touchdowns, which is the most by any Dallas Cowboys quarterback. He's second behind Tony Robo for the most 300-yard passing games as a Dallas Cowboy. And this is a guy, Dak Prescott, who's actually led the Cowboys on 15 game-winning drives. This is a guy that has a 42-27 and overall record as the starting quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys. And he's thrown for over 17,000 yards. And he, he's been phenomenal. He's been absolutely phenomenal with the Dallas Cowboys. And so 17,000 passing yards, 106 touchdowns, 40 interceptions. And yet the Cowboys haven't reached the Super Bowl and haven't won a Super Bowl in 25 years. Now, I know what we should be talking about. I know what we should be talking about. What we should be talking about is should. Dallas have given him this money? Should Jerry Jones have caved and acquiesced to Todd Francis demands and to Dax demands and given him this contract? And that's a completely valid argument. You're paying this guy this much money, this lucrative of a deal. Hell yeah, you're expecting at least an NFC championship appearance, if not a Super Bowl. I totally understand that. That is totally valid and legitimate. I don't want to focus on that today. I don't want to focus on that today because the reality is, yes, this is a lucrative contract. And yes, if my mom gave me $500 to go buy groceries to make a meal for my family to get a nice meal, I'm not going to Trader Joe's. If I go to Trader Joe's, I'm going to get shredded. My mom's not giving me $500 to go to Trader Joe's. I love Trader Joe's. Everyone loves Trader Joe's. Quality's great. The soundtrack is always on point. Produce, quality is fantastic. You give me $500 to go buy groceries, I'm going to Whole Foods. That's a Whole Foods type of trip. If I don't come back with a Whole Foods bag or a Bristol Farms bag, I'm getting absolutely torn to pieces. You're not going to Trader Joe's with $500 on your budget to buy groceries. You're not going to get fresh meat. doesn't matter if it's boarhead quality, boarhead meats from a Ralph's. If I come back with a Ralph's bag, my mom's going to tear me to shreds. I'm, she's expecting me to go to a delicatessen, to go to a deli, but I don't want to focus on that today because I just want to take a step back, take a deep breath and just appreciate and relish this moment for Dak Prescott. That's what I want to do. I want to take a sauna in this story because this is one of the most heartfelt stories that you can find. And it's easy to quickly move on 
to the next following question, which is, well, what should the expectations be? And they're all valid and legitimate. But let's take a step and just treasure this moment and enjoy this moment for a man that has had to endure so much. Because for whatever reason, it's just felt like people have never fully embraced Dak Prescott. They, they've never wanted to wrap their arms around him. First, it was he was being scrutinized for expediting Tony Romo's retirement and taking over his job in 2016. That was the first complaint. Then it was, well, this is Zeke's team, and all the success is predicated on Ezekiel Elliott. And the only reason why Dak has had any success is because of the run game by Ezekiel Elliott. Then there was the impasse with the contract with Jerry Jones and his agent, Todd France, and they were at a grid. They, they, there was a gridlock that was existing between the two of them. And Jerry Jones was trying to divide the fan base. Who should you root for? Who should you support in this instance? And then Dak is forced to sign the franchise tag. He bets on himself and he suffers a gruesome, devastating, potentially career ending injury, shattering his ankle. And instead, of taking the moment to console the guy, we're already devaluing his impact as the starting quarterback and saying, oh, well, a guy in Andy Dalton can probably come in and do an admirable job. And what we saw is that whole situation blew up last year. Dallas was horrendous. And what it highlighted was that Dak Prescott was, in fact, the linchpin that has kept this Dallas Cowboys team afloat. That's what it showed. And so he's had to endure so much. He's lost loved ones. He obviously shattered his ankle. He's had to battle his way to get to this point. This is a quarterback who didn't go to a power five. I mean, he went to a power five school, but he didn't go to a, to one of the elite power five schools in the SEC. He went to Mississippi State. He was selected in the fourth round. Over the course of his first four years in the NFL, he accumulated $3.6 million. He didn't actually make over a million dollars till his fourth year in the league, his fourth year as a starter, in which he had already led the Cowboys to the playoffs twice. In fact, his rookie year, he led them to a 13 and 3 record, the best record in the NFC. And he's proven he'd collected a, a win. For the Cowboys, he'd won the NFC East twice in his first four years, and he hadn't made anything over those four years. So let's just take this time to celebrate the individual for collecting what was rightfully deserved because he's paid his dues. There's no question about it. And Dak Prescott is the consummate professional. If you're the Dallas Cowboys, you could not have hoped to have a better individual represent your organization. Consummate professional. He carries himself well in front of the media. He's a, he's a tremendous emblem of your organization. He's a leader. He galvanizes troops. He galvanizes his players. They want to run through brick walls for him. And he inspires and motivates. And that's what you need is you don't need someone who's going to bring along controversy and distractions. Someone who's going to go to work every single day and just go out and do his job. And that's, that's what he does. And so when you see the emotions overflowing and you see that embrace that he has with his brother, it just touches your heart because not only did he just receive generational wealth to set him and his family's kids and his family's family's kids, just generations of wealth for his entire family, but you see the hard work that he put in. So today, I don't want to be talking about, well, is Dak Prescott really worth this contract? Should he be the second highest paid quarterback in the NFL behind Patrick Mahomes? No. Should he be making more money than Deshaun Watson, than Aaron Rodgers, than Russell Wilson? No, he shouldn't be. I'm not denying that at all. Should he really have been the one to receive the largest signing bonus 
in NFL history for a quarterback at $66 million? No, but I don't care. Not today. I don't care. Not today. Because again, ability, the best ability is availability. And outside of this past year, he had been one of the most durable quarterbacks. He had played and started in all 69 games that he'd played. That's the reality. And I understand he just missed the last season, but he was on pace to have a tremendous offensive year and he shattered his ankle. And that's the first setback for him. So Jerry Jones may have won the battle, but Dak Prescott won the war. And again, I know all the the deluge of questions and expectations, the enormous expectations that are going to be heaped onto Dak Prescott. I understand that. And there will be a time and place for that. And those conversations and discussions should be had. But right now is not that time to be explicating and dissecting this contract and calling into question whether or not he's deserving of it. Let's just enjoy this sports story and appreciate a story of a guy that's had to overcome so much to reach this point. That's ultimately what we should be focusing on.